All right, in the previous lesson, we refined the hair and it wasn't quite perfect yet. It looked a little bit like this, at least it did for me. And I went ahead and spent a little bit more time cleaning it up. You can do that on your own time if you want to, but we're gonna continue on. We're gonna add some typography. Obviously the event details are important as well as maybe some images and perhaps let's change the background from purple to something that fits a little bit better. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna hit the letter T to get my type tool. I'll click once in here and I'll start typing in. In this case, I've already got my details. So I'll copy this. We'll pretend like this guy's name is John Singer. Oops. So I'll click in here, Command V to paste, Enter to uh, commit my layer. And the reason why is when this is still selected after I've pasted it, if I try and hit the letter V tool, uh, V to get my other tool or any other tools, obviously um, those are all those are all characters, so none of my shortcuts work when I'm inside of the text here. So I hit Command V, I'll hit Enter on my 10 keypad, uh, or I can click on this little check mark up here to now commit that text. And now I can use any uh, any shortcuts I want. In this case, I hit the letter V to move it around. Remember that shortcut Command T to do the free transform, and this will let me scale it up. Now, if you get tired of having to hold the Shift key to keep it in perspective, to keep the ratio, you know, how it's supposed to be, you can come up here and click on this little link icon between the width and the height. I'll click on that. And now, no matter where I scrub or, you know, drag, it'll stay the same perspective without skewing it. I can also scrub right here on the W, on the width and the height, to make this bigger or smaller. But in this case, I just want to drag it a little bit larger. And I'm just going to stick with Helvetica for this font. Quick side note. Uh, now, this is with the whole course as a whole. If you want to become a great graphic designer, you need to keep studying, keep learning everything you can. So what I thought I would show you is this movie, Helvetica, right? You can rent it on Amazon or buy it from Amazon. On Netflix, if you have the DVD subscription, you could get it from there, too. I'd highly recommend checking that out. It's great. Uh, great little documentary about the font Helvetica where it came from and some designers love it some designers hate it but it's worth knowing whatever you decide to choose in your design uh, why you chose it not just you know throw it out there so what we're gonna do now I hit T to get my type tool again and I'm just gonna click right between that space click and drag I'll hit return to put this on two lines and now what I'm gonna do is hit command A to highlight all of it and now command option and then the up or down arrow keys changes what we call the leading. Back in the day when they used to set fonts, they would actually put physical pieces of lead between the font characters. And if you watch that Helvetica movie, you'll learn more about that. Anyway, so we're changing the, the width, which again is called leading. Another way to do that, and again, I'm holding command option and the up or down arrow, control alt up and down on a PC. I can also open up my type window. If I go to window, and down to character, it adds that little shortcut here to my menu bar and you can see we can change the font, the size, right here is our letting. So with this guy selected, I can scrub here and change that gap size. Okay, so that's another way to make that change. What I was doing, I had it all selected, Command A, and again, Command Option up or down, and you can see as I do that, this number over here is changing. Okay, so again, shortcuts will help you blaze through designs much faster and get your ideas out as quick as possible. I also have uh, right here, it, I typed it out lowercase, but I hit Command Shift K to toggle on this all caps. So I want this to be all caps. Once I get my change where I want it, I'll hit Enter. And now I hit Command T, I wanna scale it up a little bit. Now let's pretend like this guy is super famous and everybody knows him. He's some kind of a rock star singer. So we can get away with, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. And now if I hold down shift, it goes by a factor of 10 right here. So if I hold down shift and go up and down, it's you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, okay? It goes faster. Or I can take my finger off of shift and go basically one point at a time, okay? So I'm gonna stack that right on top of itself. Hit the letter V to get my move tool and I am going to move this up behind. And when you did this, your type was your type layer was probably on top here. And again, that's where layers are so awesome because I can come over here, I'll click on him, and I'll drag this up above, or you can hit Command in the left bracket or right bracket keys. Those are the ones right next to your letter P. So uh, if you look at your letter P on your keyboard, the very next one, that square bracket, if I hit Command in that, it'll send my layer below. Or if I hit the next one, it'll send my layer above. 
If I come over here to layer, and let's find that arrange down here. This is what I'm doing. These are those shortcuts, okay? To move those layers up or down. So we've got him in front. And again, let's pretend like this guy is super famous. Everybody knows him. So we could get away with really cropping this to where it's almost unlegible, you know, or maybe you lose some of his letters. Or maybe you want to keep it to where if somebody's not familiar with this artist, it's still kind of legible. But that's where you have to choose. Do you want to be you know, cutting edge and do something crazy, which would be kind of cool, kind of like a magazine style, uh, or if it needs to be more of a functional piece where you don't want any information to be lost. So that's up to you as a graphic designer who's communicating to make those decisions. Okay, so we've got our text where we want it. Let's go ahead and bring in the other text here. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just copy all of this, Command C come over here and I'll click once there's a couple ways we can work I'll click once and paste this which brings it all in like this not inside of a text box so I don't have the option to reflow my text or with my text tool I can click and drag and it makes a box that then my text fits within so the reason why that would be important is let's say this is bigger um, and I'm using command shift and the period key or command shift comma to make it bigger or smaller okay and inside of a text box as I click and drag it will reflow my text to fit in that box this is great for paragraphs and things like that so again it was either click once and paste with my type tool or click and drag to make that box okay and these are all little things we'll learn more as we go but just so you know what I'm doing that okay so here we've got the details now here's where you would not want the details to hide behind his shoulder otherwise people won't show up on time so we need to find a creative way to enclose this information and bring it in front so first and foremost I'll hit command shift and the right bracket key so it's not the one right next to the letter P but the, the one after that to bring this layer all the way to the front again that was under layer arrange uh, bring to front that's what I did okay so we've got it all the way in the front and uh, we've got our type in here and we're gonna use the same font Helvetica and let's go ahead and pause right here and in the next lesson what we'll do is we'll work with shapes and textures to start really bringing this thing to life